Hey everybody, my name is Tommy Casabona, host of the Always Be Booked Cruise Podcast, and I want to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. We're going to get into some cruise news in a moment, so if you enjoy the content, please feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to the Always Be Booked YouTube channel. And while you're there, please hit that little bell so you can get notified anytime I post a new video. Let's get into it. Currently, there are dozens and dozens of cruise ships that are sailing aimlessly throughout various regions of the world. Obviously, there are no guests, but skeleton crews still need to perform the day-to-day -day functions of keeping these floating cities operational. There are, however, thousands of crew members who have been relieved of their duties, at least temporarily, and are no longer getting paid yet still on the ship. Every day they wake up hoping to get news about what will happen and when they can be repatriated home. The process of sending people home got a little bit of a late start because initially it was thought that this could really be a 30, 40, 50 day ordeal. When the extensions were announced, then and only then did cruise lines begin thinking about making cuts and getting people home. Aside from that, the main obstacle in terms of getting people back home is a CDC mandate that would require any cruise line that lets their staff debark in the USA to sign legal agreements that would assure employees will follow the agency's health rules. In the event these rules are not followed, the cruise line could be held accountable and face criminal charges. The obvious issue with that being how would the cruise line be able to guarantee that these employees follow the rules once they debark. As far as what's happening on board, many crew are still working, but many of them aren't. Some ships are crossing major oceans and some are docked and some just sail back and forth between ports of call. This is a very stressful situation for many cruise ship employees because of the fact that they're facing the unknown. The first mystery is where are they going and when can they get home to their friends and family? The second mystery is are they safe? I've watched a good amount of crew made vlogs and while none of them seem like it's a vacation, there are varying degrees of morale out there and most of it probably depends on the situation. You will see some ships who do have known cases on board and there is a vessel wide quarantine where the non-working staff has to remain locked in their staterooms and can only come out for short windows of time to get some sunlight and exercise. Clearly, this is a situation that sounds like most prison conditions. Other ships do not have any known cases and all passengers are free to walk around the ship to swim, eat, exercise, and socialize as they please. For these people, they are still being held against their will, but many of them look on the bright side and realize that their room and board is paid for, and they are safe, and they don't have to go through this alone. There were some reports, however, of situations where a cruise ship thought to be COVID-free and was seen discreetly transferring passengers off the ship for quote-unquote medical purposes. These reports are not confirmed by any cruise line, and one could imagine how stories, accurate or fiction, can quickly gain traction in such tight quarters. Either way, I would imagine the only saving grace for many of these people is that at least they make a living working on cruise ships so that there is some level of familiarity to the situation. I'm not saying it's ideal, but that has to be somewhat of a help during these tumultuous times. Many cruise lines are taking a very proactive approach to getting people back home, but for those affected, this process cannot happen fast enough. One would have to think that the vlogs, tweets, and various other forms of social media communication regarding this awful situation has helped, maybe put some pressure on those who have a say on how quickly all of this can happen. You've seen Carnival make an attempt at getting cruise ship employees back home by gathering 18 of his ships in the Caribbean in the hopes of transferring people directly to cruise ships that are heading back to where many of them are from, thus making it not necessary to debark in the US. This gives them the ability to bypass the strict laws put in place by the CDC, which detail those transportation mandates that would be so difficult for the cruise lines to enforce. While we are hearing more stories every day regarding staff being repatriated, there are still thousands of workers at sea who have no idea when this is all going to come to an end. Royal Caribbean recently made an announcement delaying their return till August 1st as well. Many people took this as Royal Caribbean keeping up with Carnival and saying, okay, this is going to be a definitive date that they're going to go back to sea. However, Royal Caribbean did recently make it a point to say that this was just an extension of their cruising halt. And at this time, there is no definite answer as to when they will return to service. My question remains, where are these ships going? Many governments at various ports of call have shown absolutely zero signs of allowing cruise ships or their passengers back in. 
Currently, around 96% of travel destinations around the world have at least some sort of restrictions as to who they are letting back in. We already know that Grand Cayman has said that no cruise passengers would be allowed until at least September, and for the most part, the other leaders in the region are taking the same approach the cruise lines have been taking by just extending their restrictions every 30 days or so. One might imagine that this is an extremely difficult decision. It's no mystery how much the economics of the region depends on the tourism dollar, but at what cost? Should they start pumping money back into the economy by welcoming back tourists? Or should they play it safe and wait until this pandemic is behind them? For now, the decision is being made for them. But as the cruise lines start to come back into service, the ball will be back in their court. Government officials will have some very difficult decisions to make in the coming weeks. And as for my prediction, I only have one. Somebody's going to be pissed off either way. Oh, and get those privately owned cruise islands ready. While we are still waiting for the announcement from many governments in the Caribbean regarding their policy on cruise ships, Thursday, Time Out Magazine published an article saying that St. Lucia, Aruba, and Antigua have all mentioned that phases of their reopenings for general tourism could begin as early as June. Let's go one by one here. St. Lucia said that starting on June 4th, they will begin allowing tourists from the United States to return. There will be updated sanitation protocols and hotels will have to apply for a COVID-19 certificate that shows that they are in compliance with the criteria that include social distancing rules, cleanliness rules, and many more. Visitors must present certified proof of coronavirus tests taken within 48 hours of boarding their flights to the island. New cruise measures to keep people safe will be mandated on face masks, hand sanitizers, and partitions in high-risk places like taxi cabs. This will be considered phase one, and if all goes well, will be followed up by a phase two to begin on August 1st. Antigua will allow flights from the United States to resume on June 4th. No word on cruise ships as of yet. A negative COVID-19 test would have to be presented at the airport upon arrival. New safety protocols will include breaks for cab drivers to re-sanitize after each fare. Hotel employees are to live on the properties to limit potential spread and tourists will be discouraged from mingling with the locals. I mean, can you imagine trying to enforce this? Okay, how about Aruba? As of now, the island that puts the A in the ABC Islands has not yet set a date, but hopes to reopen sometime between June 15th and July 1st. Since there is no official date, Aruba is still putting together the details of their plan, but as of now, what is being mentioned is screening measures upon arrival and establishment of the Aruba Health and Happiness Code, which is a cleaning and hygiene certification program that will be mandatory for all tourism-related businesses to comply with. Aside from those three, all we really have is the Bahamas who is looking at a July 1st reopening. Now, while these islands are not being very specific about when actual cruises will be permitted to come back, I still think this is a relevant discussion because, as we have found out, this stuff is all going to happen in waves and phases, and each one gets us closer to the next. As we continue this theme of ever-changing and fluid situations, I want to give you guys an update on the latest and greatest in the way of cruising cancellations and refund policies. Some of them have have changed some of them have stayed the same regardless of that i figured we should run down the list and keep you guys in the loop on what some of the major cruise lines have laid out Carnival, if you are booked on a Carnival cruise between May and September of 2020, you can cancel up to 30 days prior to your sailing and receive a future cruise credit with which you can use to rebook a cruise within one year of the original sale date. Let's move it over to Disney. Disney Cruise Lines has changed their policy to allow its passengers to be able to get a 100% cruise credit if they change their reservation up until the day prior to their scheduled embarkation. The credit must be used on sailings that are no later than 15 months after the original cruise date. Holland America Line guests are allowing cruisers to cancel their sailings that are booked through October 15th, 2020. Any cancellation will be given full credit towards any available cruise through 2021. They also added a new book with confidence policy, not to be confused with Royal Caribbean's cruise with confidence policy. See, I told you they copy each other. 
where anyone who makes a new booking by August 31st for any itinerary that departs on or before October 15th of this year can cancel for any reason and get a future cruise credit in the amount of any cancellation fees that may be applied as a result of that cancellation. If you are booked on MSC, you can cancel any reservation that exists on or before September 30th up to 48 hours prior to the sailing and get a future cruise credit in the amount you paid and put that on any cruise departing on or before December 31st of this year, of course. Now, Norwegian, they dub their policy peace of mind, and this gives everyone who books a Norwegian cruise through November of 2020 the ability to cancel up to 48 hours prior to the sale date and get 100% future cruise credit that can be used on any sailing through December 31st, 2022. See, this I think is smart. You come off looking like you have the most generous policy out there, but unlike the other cruise lines, you can extend the cost of giving away these credits over a more lengthy period of time. Princess Cruises is offering passengers on canceled sailings who were paid in full a future cruise credit for 100% of the cruise fare paid, plus a bonus in future cruise credit of 25% of that cruise fare. Couldn't they just say 125%? Guests who have not made their final payment will get a future cruise credit that is worth double the currently paid deposit amount provided that that number doesn't go any higher than the total price of the cruise, of course. Now, Royal Caribbean, along with Celebrity and Azamara, we covered last week, but let's clear it up and refresh. Remember, this is the cruise with confidence policy. Under this policy, guests can cancel up to 48 hours prior to their scheduled sailing. Those who do cancel will be able to receive a full credit for their cruise fare, usable on any future sailing through April of 2022. This policy is good for new and already existing bookings that are made on or before August 1st of this year. Amendments to this deal are that cruisers can call up to 48 hours prior to departure if they find a lower price on their sailing and they will be given back that difference in the form of an onboard credit. If they do find this deal prior to final payment, they can get the difference applied in a rate adjustment. Also, Royal Caribbean, who apparently loves to name things, also wants you to know about its new lift and shift program. That will allow cruisers to move their 2020 cruise to 2021 or 2022 as long as it's a similar cruise. No matter what the listed price is, you will be able to get the same rate as the one you originally paid for. The catch is that it has to be within the same four-week period on the calendar date as the original. So, for example, if you book a cruise for September 1st of 2020 and you're worried about the pandemic, you can change that for a cruise anytime, let's just say around August 1st to September 30th in either 2021 or 2020. 2022. Hence the name Lift and Shift. By the way, one final note, I recently did just see that Australia, which originally had hinted that the ban on cruise ships might be lifted sometime around June, has decided to extend the ban on any vessels carrying more than 100 people into September. So there will be no cruise ships into or out of Australia for another three months. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe. Also, give it a like if you're so inclined and hit that notification bell. Also, we have the Always Be Booked Cruise Podcast. Catch that anywhere that you like to listen to your favorite podcast. Thanks again for listening. Boat Drinks.